Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am here today with Nikki DiBartolo and Ben Heldfond, who were once husband and wife. And now, though their marriage has been over for over a decade, they are still happily sharing a life with each other and their son, Asher, along with their new spouses and children. But their divorce was not fast, and it certainly was not easy, but together they created a happy post-divorce modern family. They co-authored a book called Our Happy Divorce, which also has contributions from their current spouses, Nadia and Chad, in it. And the reviews from this book are amazing. So one reader says that she loves this book because it tells a truthful tale of one couple's journey through the pain of divorce, which started as many do with anger, hurt, and a shark attorney, but then reveals how they pulled back and found a different path that allowed for forgiveness, hope, and a new kind of love. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Renee. All right. So let's just start from like, I, you did not, you two were sitting next to each other for this interview <laughs> and you do not have your hands around each other's necks. So that well, means we'd like to, <laughs> <laughs> so that means somewhere along this process, they were sort of a truce. So why don't we just start with how did you go from the conflict and the chaos and the hurt to where you are now? Well, I don't think we are, uh, we're not unique in the sense of having all that conflict, that hurt, and that despair. Uh, that is, I think, part of the divorce process and making that decision. So I don't think we're unique uh, and we're the only couples that felt that way. But I think that one thing w when it boils down to what we did right, uh, eventually, like you said, we didn't do it right uh, from the first start, from the from the go. But eventually what we decided, what we did was we took the emotional part of the divorce and the business side of the divorce. And we, we split them up and, and we kept them in their two different corners and we dealt with the emotional side first. And that from that moment on, um, I think that the, the process became a little easier. It wasn't, you know, uh, it, I should say a little simpler. It wasn't, it was, it's not going to be easy. It's going to suck. Uh, and it sucked for us, but it, it, we were able to then go to the business side of it and not make decisions off what he or she did or didn't do and all the other nonsense that gets uh, clogged up uh, with those decisions. So when you said you dealt with the emotional side, and Nikki, maybe you want to take this, how did you do that? Because that's a really, it's hard to flip the switch and that's where most people can't do that. And that's how they end up in a contentious trial. Mm -hmm. I think I think for, for me, it was more so like I had to realize that I can only deal with my emotional side. I, I couldn't deal with his or whether I thought the way he was dealing with things was right or was wrong or like I just had to kind of like cut, cut the tie of emotions with him. And I think it took a lot of self-reflection and finding and like looking in with, within myself a lot of therapy. <laughs> Yeah, he laughs at that. Well, yeah, you still could use it, but that's a whole other topic. But, uh, you know, that's an example of me not keeping my side of the street clean, right? And and that's what I think Nikki was saying. But is like, it, We definitely needed to, like, I couldn't worry about his, his like, street cleaning. Right. I only we, could deal with my own. We tried for many years uh, to clean each other's street. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, that's why we ended up in divorce. But I think for me, anyways, uh, I was the one who... I guess was the more bitter, angry one who went out and did the research on the shark lawyer and all that. Mm. Um, but what it came down to the turning point for me, I'm just nicer. Yeah. Uh, was, was my experience and, and my experience with my parents' divorce, which was a high conflict divorce uh, in the eighties. You know, I mean, you can only imagine they made a movie out of it. It's called war of the roses. Um, but even despite my experience, uh, and and this should show listeners and uh, to this how powerful the, the emotions of a divorce is. Is I was going to go down that same path. Mm -hmm. I was headed down that same path, and it wasn't until I read this, you know, war and peace memo uh, attack plan, strategic plan by this lawyer, uh, and, and I got a couple pages into it. Did I realize that I knew where this path ended? You know, I had to find a different way. Otherwise, I was going to be you know, repeating the same mistakes as my parents made. And ultimately the only person who was going to get hurt was Asher. Mm. And I, 
think for me, I, I mean, I didn't particularly like him when we were getting divorced, but I wasn't down like the destruction path like he was because I'm more of a fixer and I want to fix things and I want to make things better and I want the relationship to get better. So it's like, do we get back together? Do we not get back together? Do we like, like how, what can we do to make our son's life as much as much the same as my, the way I grew up. I mean, my parents are still married 50, what, three years later now. So I didn't go through that conflict divorce. So I wanted to make sure his life stayed as much like my life growing up as possible. Mm. But Ben was just mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, I think that, uh, like I said, nobody ends a marriage on a winning streak. Uh, nobody ends a marriage, uh, I think, at least for us, we, it wasn't a decision that came out of a fight one night at, at a restaurant. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a process. I didn't throw a glass of wine on you or anything like that. No, not that time. But, uh, you know, the, there was, you know, I had moved out a couple of times and then like Nikki said, she was a fixer and, 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 you know, we would make all these promises to each other. So it was the divorce. It was the limbo, I guess, in between uh, that. I think a lot of couples go through uh, in, until that decision is, is ultimately made. Hmm. I, so who got the shocker lawyer? Ben. I did. Okay. And so I'm curious about your perspective on what that person did to make things worse. Because I think a lot of times people think mm. I'm going to go for the so-called pit bull, although I have a mm. pit bull and she, he's as docile as can be, but <laughs> I'm going to go for the lawyers going that's going to inflict the most pain and they don't get that the fallout of what happens. Um, it's interesting because it wasn't until we uh, I, I spoke with this attorney here in Tampa who is a, who is a divorce l lawyer uh, is, is did I realize what that guy and, and how he possibly uh, um, could have ca caused the wrinkle or and it was uh, Seth Nelson who, who, who's, who's a great divorce attorney he said because I had asked him I said what do you how do you know that you're sitting with the wrong lawyer or, or a lawyer that could be a problem um, and he said, if the lawyer promises you everything that you want, it's a problem. It's going to be a problem because that is impossible. Right. And so looking back on it, when he said that, I remember the first conversation with this lawyer and it was like the moon, the stars, you know, another galaxy. You're going to get it all. We I have was a convinced, though, it's the same plan that he gives every other couple. It just changes the names in it. And, and so what, what, you know, I think the, 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 the issue when we talk about the emotional and the business and all, you know, with all the uh, stuff that divorce has is people leave marriages, they're desperate, they're hopeless, they're in fear and all these negative emotions. And, and in that space, uh, at least for me, uh, you know, that's where religious extremists recruit. That's where, uh, you know, cults recruit. Um, and shark attorneys do too, because people are desperate. They just want to feel better and they want people to, they want to hear what's going to make them feel better. And, and in that point where it's all the other person's fault, that's what they, you know, that's what I was you know, told by this lawyer. So it's really a, a dangerous slope. And, and we have a friend, you know, Susan Guthrie, who always says that she was amazed that I sat down with that lawyer, went through the process and paid the retainer and, and, and I got out, <laughs> you know, and, and I called him, you know, after I had read a couple of pages and I said, I just have to find a different way. And we didn't know what that way was. I mean, there's so yeah, many good resources. This was 14 years ago and, and there, there was no Googling happy divorce. So there was no Googling. No. Right. And, and so we didn't know what we were going to do. I just knew on that plane after I'd read his, uh, you know, game plan, I knew where that path ended. I had already had an experience, a life experience with that path, but I wanted to go, you know, find this other one and, and what that looked like, you know, really we had no, we were traveling uncharted waters for us. And I think people read those things and they're feeling the way they do and they're feeling hurt. And I think they want to make sure the other person is feeling as horrible as they possibly are, if not worse. Yeah. And I, I mean, and I think they, thank God, thank God for me because oh, yeah. thank God for me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, I say I mean, that every day. I sort of sat back and tried to like kind of wait it out. I mean, I had an, I had spoken to attorneys, but they were more so family friend attorneys that I knew that were sort of guiding me just to kind of like, you know, sit back and let's just 
see what happens because we kind of knew where his head was and kind of what he was doing. Go ahead, say it. Is that yeah, was, Oldsmobile following you around? What? Right. <laughs> I've, I, I was, for a couple months there, there was a black Oldsmobile I that followed me everywhere. He's lying, sort of. <laughs> uh, but no, I did just have to kind of go. Okay, let's just wait this out and hope he hope he comes around. But I really, honestly, didn't really think he would. I, I, I couldn't have, you know, I, I don't know why it happened. I, you know, I just know that, uh, after that, uh, I called the lawyer and asked for, you know, my retirement back and found a different way is, is we just, I $300 back. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was the best, it was a lot of money and it was actually yeah. ironically about, uh, I paid, uh, 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 the next lawyer about 25%, uh, less, oh, I'm sorry, 75% less than what I paid this attorney to write up this, you know, couple hours of work, this, you know, they looking at, write. uh, you know, th this game plan. And it just shows you that, you know, when you deal with the emotional side, it, it only, it, not only do you get emotionally better, but it, it's also financially better for you. So I paid 75% less to get our divorce done than I did for this guy to write up this, this nonsense. Yeah. And, and that's it. And when you're in it though, sometimes you can't see that you don't have that clarity because you just want to inflict the pain and the, the all of that work, the mean letters, the forceful bullying that someone sees, it's like, oh, this person's advocating for me and they're fighting for me, but they're exactly. not because we know at the other end, there's only a range of what's going to happen. There's only a certain outcome and it's going to fit within that range. So no matter how much of that retainer that person person spends, you still end up with that, that same range. So let's, let's switch it up and talk about co-parenting um, with Asher. How were you able to work out a parenting plan that you both could live with? Well, well, I think, I, the, I think we, we had to go, we, they, they made us go to one of those parenting classes, mm -hmm. those horrible parenting classes that Ben almost got kicked out of um, because what did, what, what did they tell us in that class? They, they well, kept saying, and what was the, what was it that they kept yelling at us about? About, so first of all, so if Being friends with your kid and then like, it, it was very like, uh, this is the way you're supposed to parent, not the way this you're supposed to co-parent, but, but Nikki and I, you know, went there together. Um, we didn't exactly like love each other. Ben. No, but this was part <laughs> of the faking it till we made. So, so I think if we fast forward a little bit, uh, I'm sorry, rewind a little bit to when after I had done this work on myself and and my side of the street and found my part uh, of the uh, uh, marriage of the marriage ending. And Nikki had done the same thing. I asked her to coffee and we sat down. And the first thing I did was I apologized to her because I had seen my part. You know, I, I took the, you know, the, the hard, honest look at, you know, the man that I thought I was and then the man that I really was. Uh, and, you know, out of that um, apology and accountability, Nikki then apologized to me. Um, and the next question that I had was, do you have any problem with joint custody, joint, everything, you know, 50, 50. And she said, absolutely not. And, and at that point, that's Even when the though inside I was like, Ugh. right. No, I, look, I didn't want to give it up either, but, but you know, at the end of the day, that's what was best for our son. And she said, absolutely not. I want you to have as much time, you know, as you can, or as much time as I have, uh, with them. And I said at that, after that, everything else can be worked out. So that's when our real co-parenting, I think, really, really began. Uh, and, and then we didn't really know uh, what to do. Um, we sat at a coffee, the same coffee shop where, you know, we uh, uh, said, uh, I'm sorry, made amends to each other. And then we started just seeing what we could agree upon, right? We took the big ticket item and that wasn't the financial part. That was custody. And that was joint the, and didn't have a problem with that. Check. And then we sort of just went through the list. I mean, they gave us, they gave us, what was that woman? She was an attorney? Or yeah, was she? no, part of the, so the parenting plan you you uh, referred to was we sort of just figured it out, right? And and we didn't. We had someone to fall back on if we argued. Right, we had to go meet with some, because we did a collaborative divorce, but it wasn't really in the statute at the time. So it was this new sort of thing in Florida. And part of that was we had to go, I guess to a tiebreaker, maybe it was a therapist. It's been so long. I'm sorry. I don't remember, but whatever it was, but she, we never used her. No, if we ever had a problem <laughs> and that we couldn't agree upon, we would go see her and she would, you know, decide our fate. Uh, but uh, you know, we did things a little different with, with our parenting plan. It wasn't except for the holidays, which was, you know, odd years. I get them for Christmas and those things, but, but the 
time spent is Nikki and I, for the first, I don't know, three, four years, we would meet at the coffee shop and Nikki would take out, you know, this is even literally a piece of paper, a calendar, calendar. printout. Not, I mean, we had iPhones and all that at the time, but she, Nikki being Nikki and the, the uh, organized person she is. And we would just go through, she'd ask me when I'm traveling, uh, I would tell her when she's traveling and we would split up the month, 15 and 15. And it wasn't that I, and the difference between that and when I grew up was, you know, I saw my dad every Wednesday and every other weekend or whatever the agreement was. If my dad was traveling or couldn't make it a weekend, it was too bad. You know, that, that was your weekend. But Nikki and I, you know, she was very respectful of, of my time with Asher and also the life we live and the traveling and all that. And so our parenting plan was, 15 days on or, or 15 days a month with Nikki, 15 days a month with, with me. And we would sit down, we would do each month. Uh, and, and now I trust her. So I let her do it herself. I mean, and but even now, like the other day, Asher, like I do that. I had to go, I had to go to an event. My husband and I had to go to an event and Asher was at our house and he goes, I'm just going to go spend the night at my dad's tonight because you guys aren't going to be home. And I was like, go like, yeah. great, go for it. You know? And he was like, okay. And he just, off on his little way. How, how old is he now? 17. 17. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. different when they're teenagers because mine's 15 and he's the one too to be like, hey, can we like flip flop so that dad can drive my girlfriend home tomorrow? I'm like, what do I care? Sure. Right. Like, okay. <laughs> you know, and it's the, 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 the uh, don't want to like, make this seem like, I mean, yes, it is amazing, right? I mean, our life, we live seven houses down from each other. We go on family vacations. We do things all the time. But even, you know, when, when your son, when Asher tells me he's going to go down to his mom's or that him and Chad are going to go on a fishing trip, or, you know, it's still a little blow to the ego. Now it's gotten a little easier, right, to deal with that and identify it. But I, I'd be lying if I didn't say however many years later, uh, you know, when, when your son says when it's, you know, quote, unquote, your time that he wants to go spend his, the, uh, uh, the night at his mom's because so-and-so. But, it, you know, I guess the reaction from the ego and then what's best for masher is a learned behavior yeah. and then you just got to like stop and say you know what what's the it's not a big deal this is great for him he wants to go spend time with his stepdad or you know his mom for whatever reason that's great nikki i have a question for you and i want to back up a little bit because i hear over and over again from women who don't want to do the 50 50 they don't want to give up that that parenting time and then for whatever reason they show up to their divorce thinking well i will i'll get more time because that's just the way it is and it's not just the way it is anymore and 50 50 is kind of like the default but i'm just curious as to what your thought process was as to why you said yeah of course 50 50. well i mean i hated it I hated every bit of saying yes to that, but I knew, I, I honestly knew that that would have been a deal breaker with Ben. And I knew that it probably wasn't what was best for Asher. I mean, I knew that he needed to spend as much time with him as he spent with me. And I, I just, I just kind of had to swallow my pride and just say, okay, this is, yeah. this is, this is what's going to, this is what is going to be best. And I mean, and don't get me wrong when Ben, you know, when, Ben had a serious girlfriend and he ended up marrying her naughty. I mean, that was like, that even made it even harder for me. Yeah. Like knowing that there was some other woman that was at their house and like putting him to sleep and, you know, making him breakfast in the morning. I mean, that was even worse, but I'm like, I couldn't do anything about it other than just go, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay for like, it's great that there are so many people that will love him as much as, yeah. you know, well, not as much, but as much as I would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thought, the thought disputes that went on. I, I, she just mentioned one. You yeah. know, these thought bubbles, right, in the beginning, and even today, they go over. They're uh, awful. They're awful. I mean, they're you know, because it, it, it most of the time it speaks right to the ego, right, and, and that is what for me, anyways, is the biggest hurdle, you know, in my life, or causes me the most problems. And if I had done. Uh, decisions or made most decisions of this divorce process off of the ego or off those thought bubbles <laughs> and didn't dispute them, we wouldn't be sitting here today, yeah. you know, and, and for us in the beginning, uh, we use the term fake it until we made it, you know, we would fake it and we would show up at Asher's, you know, sporting events, birthdays. his birthdays, whatever, and put on our big boy pants and as best as we could smile and, and make things feel. Now, I don't know if that is a, 
professional therapy, you know, <laughs> a therapist would tell you that, but that's what we did. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and when, when, you know, I mean, uh, honestly, we probably weren't even sure it was going to work. No, no. And, and then somewhere along the line, and I can't tell you when, uh, it became natural and that's the made it right. And at some point it, it all became clear on why it happened. And, and I really can't tell you when it happened, but you know, it, it switched from like all those emotions of, of the past to, you know what? I kind of really like her. You know, I mean, she's, she's fun. You know, it was, it was like the beginning of the relationship, right? There was a reason that we got married and, and we kind of came full circle from us as somewhere along the line of, of, you know, uh, of, you know, mayor, uh, meeting, dating, marriage, divorce to, you know what? She's kind of a good person. Hmm. I mean, you retrained your, yeah. Yeah. your thought process about each other just by habit. I mean, that's like, that's, there's subconscious training all about that is you just, by continuously changing your thought patterns, you actually changed how you felt about each other. hundred percent. And I love that it, it's our happy divorce, but it's not all happy. And like, that's no. like the truth telling the truth bomb part of it is it's that tough. it is freaking hard. And there are, you still have moments after all of these years. Yeah. And I think one of the we most like brother and sister, now. There, there's no question. And I think one of the, uh, at least expectations that some people have that we, that I had anyways, was the divorce, uh, is the judgment, um, uh, you know, from the judge or whatever that you get, but that, you know, to, to, for us, that was just the beginning. Right. And we are still divorced. You know, we still, the landmines aren't as often, right. But, but there are landmines from the day we got the, you know, the judgment to, to today. And we still have arguments. We still fight. We still, you know, we're co-parenting a teenager, as you know, that is whether we were together or apart, that's not an easy proposition. It's not, it's not easy. <laughs> right. And so, you know, we just continued, we would step in the landmines uh, and we, again, committed to the process and, and, you know, happy doesn't mean that it's all rainbows and unicorns and, you know, rainbow waterfalls and such. But what it is, is we've managed to not hand our son the emotional bill for our decisions, right? He didn't pick the restaurant. He didn't order off the menu. He didn't pick the wine. And why, so why should he be stuck with the bill? So that's to us what a happy divorce is, right? And it can come in so many different shapes and sizes. For us, it's just a little bit extreme. But but at the end of the day, if you, if you are able to not hand your children the emotional bill for them to pay, you know, to us, that's a happy divorce. Mm -hmm. How is he doing? How did he, now it's been a long time since you were divorced. So how, what's the impact do you think on him? I mean, I think for the most part, I mean, it's pretty great. I mean, I think he's, I think he's pretty well adjusted, but I mean, even Ben will tell you that he it was probably like three years ago, took him on a, took him on a trip, a fishing trip to get the two of them together. And he was just sitting there one day and he looked at Ben and he said, you know, dad, this divorce is really hard on me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Ben's first reaction wanted, that was like, how dare you, you little that? SOB, you have no idea, <laughs> right? But again, the ego, like that's the thought bubble. But that was my first reaction was you little SOB, you have no idea what a hard divorce is. But then, you know, stopped and, you know, it didn't it sort of disputed those thoughts and said, you know what, just the logistics of it, just the moving of a, a house every couple of nights. And, for, and and I could remember that. Or forget about all the, the other books, nonsense. Forgetting the, this at dad's house and forgetting this at mom's, but I want these shoes, but they're at mom's house. Yeah. I want this and it's at dad's house. And then ultimately... If you think about it, he talk about it having no choice in it. If it was his choice and he did have a choice in it, he would want his parents together. Right. And, and, and so even as good as the happy divorce is, as good as whatever, it's still, still a, a, a burden on him. Now, now pile on the other nonsense. And you could put miracle grow on all those hard, you know, the, those hardness. But he's a very well adjusted kid. The, the, how Nikki and I had an offspring. <laughs> uh like that maybe it, it is for another topic so but maybe true. the universe isn't fair right that we have this you know great student funny athletic big hearted i mean yeah. just he he really is a great kid um and, and he takes a lot he takes after me oh absolutely <laughs> All of the best qualities, all right? All the best. Yeah, she's claiming all the best qualities. When right? he's in trouble, it's all Ben's fault. Absolutely. Always. Your son, Always right? Yeah, I get your son. I've done a few of those texts. Do you know what your son just did? Right. <laughs>
Yep. So let's talk about the book. What was the inspiration for it? And like, just share a little bit about the details because it's awesome. Well, I think for, I, I think for us, it, people always used to just look at pictures we would post together and they would always say, I don't understand how you do it. Like if we would just post family pictures of like being out together, being out to dinner together, being on a vacation together, and people would always ask us questions and they would always say, you guys should write a book. Of course, my first reaction was hell no. Um, second reaction was, I don't know how to write a book. <laughs> and then Ben was like, no, we really should write a book. And I was like, hell no. And it took a lot of like poking and prodding and him just saying, listen, we really should do this. It's not for us. It's for other people. If we could just help one couple get through what we went through, then it's worth it. Yeah. And I think the, uh, um, idea behind that coffee shop meeting or that first meeting with the shark attorney, if, if you had told Nikki and I that, you know, 13 years, 14 years later that we would be writing a book talking about how great our divorce is, you, we would have looked at you sideways, right? It was never the intention, but, but the one thing that I realized on that plane after, you know, when I started reading that, uh, the, the manual, the, the, the destroy Nikki manual is that, one, it was the first time in a long time I was honest with myself. And I said, you know what? There's no way that this could be all one person's fault in a relationship. It takes two to make it and it takes two to ruin it. And, and, and so that's was my moment, you know, of clarity. But then the same thing goes for our, you know, our, our divorce and our happy divorce, whatever you want to call it, is it takes two to make it. It takes two to, you know, it, it would take two to make it and it would take two to not have it happen. So you know, people like Nikki said would start talking about, you know, writing a book and they would ask questions like, what's going on with the health funds? Like, is this some, it was almost some like, a, like in the beginning, like some poly thing or, you know, whatever it was, yeah, no. but, but, and then we, yeah, then, no. and then people started calling us friends. I'd have friends call me who are going through a divorce and ask for advice. And, and, and for me in my life, you know, I've gone through many therapies. I've been to all kinds of doctors and um, you know, but what I get the most inspiration from is somebody who has this lived experience. Um, and, and has been to hell and has been in the shoes that I might be in at that time. And I want to hear how they got out. So, you know, it was m sort of my poke prodding of Nikki, but the only way that I was going to write this book is if she did it with me. And again, the fact that <laughs> she didn't know how to write a book, I don't think I've ever read a book. Um, <laughs> you know, it's cool. <laughs> uh, you know, so, yeah, but, but it was a process of, you know, again, it, uh, there's a show called The Affair, uh, or there was a show called The Affair, and basically it was an hour show, and each hour was spent from one person's perspective, and then the other, or, I'm sorry, one, 30 minutes with one person's perspective, and then 30 minutes was the other. And so that's how we sort of formatted the book, is we would take these, you know, the coffee shop experience or the mm -hmm. decision to make divorce and just go back and forth. And So we each got to tell how we thought that part of our life looked. Yeah. And, 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 you know, times it was quite different. <laughs> it, it was, but, you know, and, and, the, and it shows you sort of the uh, evolution of our divorce, you know, and, and our lives together and how we look at each other is I didn't look at her uh, writing or her chapters and go, oh, you need to clean this up. You need to do it. Right. That was her side of the street. Right. I just did focused on mine and and she did hers. And, and it was, you know, it turned out to be something that, you know, again, that we could never imagine. And like you said in the beginning, it took, it took, it wasn't a short process, right? I mean, it was, it, it took us a couple of years to write this book, but as the book, uh, you know, took so long, our lives, you know, evolved and, and our happy divorce evolved and Chad and Nikki, we realized Nadia. what, Nadia. did I say Chad and Nikki? Yeah. Oh, that's a big mistake. Oh. Uh, Chad, <laughs> do it all the time. The N words mess me up. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, but they had, we realized what an important role they played in it. So right. as you said in the beginning, we asked them to write chapters. And then Asher wrote this, he was going to eighth grade, uh, high school and he wrote his essay uh, and his essay for his acceptance or his, uh, what entrance. are they called? What entrance was uh, write about somebody you admire and to on his own accord without us pushing, he wrote about his mom and dad and what they've accomplished, you know, in, in their divorce. And so we're like, let's have him write a chapter and let's have him close out the book. Yeah. So Asher, you know, closes out the book and, and with, you know, part of his essay and, so that's the evolution of, of, of not only our uh, divorce life, but how quickly things have evolved and gotten better in, you know, just two years. We started out writing a book together. 
then Nadia and Chad, uh, you know, wrote chapters and then Asher, you know, wrote. So it's not just our book. It's really our, our, our modern family's book. Mm -hmm. How do we find it? Where do we buy it? Uh, Amazon.com, um, or you can go to mascotbooks.com, our publisher. And what we've done there is, you know, we really would love ideally for, you know, a husband and wife or, or whomever uh, uh, who are breaking up to both read the book and, and, and not to get, you know, tips on what to do. There are plenty of people smarter than us and, <laughs> and, and, and have gone to way more school, but just for hope, just for an opportunity to say, you know what? And if you knew Nikki and I, this is, this is an absolute, uh, 100 percent true statement if we can do it we're convinced Seriously. that anybody can do it with anybody. our personalities so uh it's a two for one you know uh, on mascotbooks.com uh and you buy one you get two so hopefully a husband and wife or you know whatever uh, the couples uh separating will read it oh such a good story thank you guys so much for sharing your journey it's so important and i know that it's going to resonate with some people out there so thank you thank you well, thank you renee Thanks thank you for, for everything us. you do as well i mean it's great it's great the amount of resources people have today and, and there's so many people like yourself who are just you know letting people know that it could be a different way and there can be a uh, much happier way